attention, cyber attacks and operating system for top secret applications. Hi, nice to see you on this channel. I'm inviting you to watch a video about the Russian operating system, which was developed for military and other applications that require high level of confidentiality and security. The theme of this episode will be Astra Linux by Raspi Tech, which regularly provides high technology solutions for the Russian army. However, it should be emphasized that this is not a system written from scratch, but quite specific Linux distribution based on the well-known and appreciated for years Debian Linux. In addition, so far it is more often used in the office than for the sophisticated military equipment control. However, there are already more serious applications, such as the surveillance of the Russian Federation National Defense Management Center, or the fire protection system in one of the Chinese nuclear power plants. In some of the Russian power plants, Astra Linux is responsible for the administrative part, but so far it is not used to control the technological infrastructure. Russian railways also introduced this system, but I have not been able to find any confirmed information, whether only for office purposes or also for train traffic control. The plans, however, are much more ambitious. Astra Linux has numerous certificates required on the domestic market and issued, among others, by the Russian Ministry of Defense, the Federal Service for Technical and Export Control, the Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation, and is also entered in the software registry maintained by the Russian Ministry of Digitization. It is also worth pointing out that Astra Linux is not a real-time system. For the less informed, I will only add that these are the systems simplifying for very specific applications where it is necessary to guarantee that a given operation will be performed at a specific moment in time and will not take longer than strictly defined period of time and where failure to meet these conditions might result in very serious, sometimes even catastrophic consequences. More broadly, the hardware, system and installed software must guarantee compliance with the defined time constraints. For example, here you can imagine a situation of controlling some complex process in a chemical laboratory when the delay of the computer's response to an increase in temperature just by a fraction of milliseconds might cause an explosion. In this video we will focus on technical aspects and will stay away from politics. In the first part I will briefly discuss the functionality and the supplied software. In the second part I will present the advantages of having its own and partially self-developed operating system and why it is much more difficult to hack devices with such a system installed on. The whole thing without going into too much detail, especially as I am not Astra Linux specialist. If you notice any inaccuracies or have any additional interesting information, I count of course on your comments. Time for few words about the system installation itself and the software provided. Installation is very simple and typical for all systems in this family. As curiosity, it's worth mentioning the possibility of choosing one of several versions of the Linux kernel. Some are specially prepared so-called hardened kernel versions. In short, it is about providing a much higher level of security. A minor glitch or perhaps a deliberate action is the inability to choose a time zone other than Russian ones despite selecting English as the language and Great Britain as the country during the installation. Fortunately, once installed, this time zone can be changed. It must be also admitted that this distribution is prepared in a very elegant way, you have all the software on your hard disk, you need for a good day. Starting from the office suite, 
through several games, audio and graphic editing software, but also mobile phone support software. There is also a version of the system for mobile devices, and ending with a very extensive panel for controlling system settings. The user interface, thanks to the window manager called Fly, resembles to a large extent Windows systems, in particular XP, and this is for good reason, as they wanted to provide an easy migration for the less experienced people. And all of this with very reasonable computer resource requirements. Now let's try to look more widely at this system from the strategic point of view. The first advantage is to become virtually independent from the West in licensing matters. It is true that in difficult times probably no one cares about this area. However, the anti-pirate protections built in today's operating system make it difficult, but not impossible, to install illegal copies. In addition, they can also make it more challenging to install updates. This can be a double-edged sword. On the one hand, old patches allow you to significantly reduce security problems. On the other hand, one can theoretically imagine a situation where it is the mechanism that will be used to introduce a specific backdoor into the system, which, when skillfully used, allows to take over control. Two scenarios can be mentioned here. The first is when the manufacturer of the operating system itself, for example being forced by the government or security services of some country, introduces such a security hole. And the second, when hackers take advantage of some flow in the upgrade system to introduce new code that in the next step would allow to make significant changes in the software. Linux systems are based on the publicly available code that can be analyzed. And so it probably happened in the case of this specific distribution, although, as it should be assumed, to a limited extent due to time constraints. Additionally, the open source code makes it possible to add some extensions to the system, which may not be visible from the point of view of an ordinary user, but they increase the level of security. In addition, on the one hand, and simplify hackers' life when looking for vulnerabilities that can be used for breaking in. But on the other hand, thanks to thousands of programmers around the world, these potential holes are patched very quickly. Its own operating system gives Russia much better control over what happens on the computers on which it is installed. Although, of course, this is not the level that would give a system written from zero. But which country can afford to take such a step nowadays? Astra is not the only operating system being developed in this country, although most are simply different Linux distributions. The attempt to achieve independence is also visible in the work on their own processors from the Elbrus and Baikal families. Why does this factor play so crucial a role? Security specialists have been discussing for years if it's possible to exploit certain vulnerabilities, whether in the design of the processor itself, or in the firmware, or microcode, to inject malicious worm at the lowest level, which means in practice to the software that manages the processor internally. As a result, taking over control would be achieved, perhaps even unnoticeable at the operating system level. Wouldn't that be a beautiful spy tool? Most of the chips produced today are exposed to this risk, with the exception of perhaps the simplest microprocessors used to control low-level electronic devices. At the moment, Elbrus and Baikal processors are far behind the products of global Tycons. But in the future? Let's focus on the first family for a moment. It is also worth mentioning that these processors are based on a very interesting and practically unique, very long instruction word architecture. To simplify, the mechanism managing the parallel code execution by the microprocessor have been significantly reduced. However, this task is transferred to the compiler, 
which divides the program into paths without dependence among themselves, and also adds specific control signals for individual microprocessor blocks telling how to execute the code in parallel. The advantage is a significant reduction in the number of transistors and a significantly lower power consumption. However, it is much more challenging to prepare a compiler for such a microprocessor. In addition, in the case of the Elbrus family, compatibility with the x86 architecture known for years from Intel and AMD systems was ensured, which is a very controversial decision and probably partially limiting the advantages of very long instruction world architecture. Thanks to this you can run Windows XP and Windows 7. Elbrus processors are manufactured not in Russia, but by the Taiwanese company TSMC, so it's hard to talk about full independence here. Anyway, at the time when this video is being made, information about the suspensions of this production was published. On the internet I found, among other things, information from 2021, when the Russian bank Spur and more precisely its dependent IT company Spare Infra tested Elbrus processor suitability for their purposes and found that these chips were very disappointing in terms of their capabilities. Let's go back to the Astra Linux itself. It comes in two versions, the first one for everyone and that's what you see in this video, and the second one is intended for applications with a high degree of confidentiality and high security requirements. In the latter group, additional subversions were distinguished depending on the expected applications. The system itself contains a lot of unusual features. It can be mentioned, for example, that after deleting a file on the disk, the space after it is filled with masking sequences, which makes it completely impossible to recover the data, excluding perhaps some of the most sophisticated methods available only to government agencies of the richest countries, and even that is not sure. Data in RAM is also cleared when the program is terminated. Access levels have also been introduced. If a user has access to the system at several different levels, he also has several independent home directories. On one level he cannot read files from another. Another interesting feature is the special document marking system during printing. You can also turn on a lock that prevents running applications other than digitally signed. We can also mention such solutions as very advanced logging system of operations performed by user, or the file system integrity control mechanism that detects, for example, possible unauthorized modifications to files. Based on the hash function, which generates a short sequence of characters for each file, which means the checksum, that changes with any even the smallest change in the file content. Of course, there are many more features, I am not going to discuss them all in detail, but if someone is interested in the topic, I strongly encourage you to look for additional materials on the internet. Some of these features can also be found on other Linux versions by default, or can be added by installing the appropriate software. The big advantage of Astra, however, is that we get everything ready to be used in one big box. As conclusion, today it seems that only own operating system can significantly reduce the number of cyber attacks against the state infrastructure and provide a significantly higher level of national security. It is enough to compare the number of successful hacker attacks on institutions that commonly use older Windows systems with the number of such incidents concerning those that approach this area in a completely different way. Of course, however, no system can be 100% secure. Taking into account the key role played by IT systems, today should each country strive to have at least its own Linux distribution? And this is not because of the user's convenience, but because of the national strategic security. What do you think about it? Will the worlds in the future 
will be the worst of IT engineers. I hope you found this video interesting. Stay healthy.